Hello, hello, and how are you doing on today? I pray that all is well with you. This is Coach Ivy coming to you on today, continuing uh, out of the workbook about becoming a warrior. I pray that you are enjoying these lessons and uh, you're doing the work, uh, digging in those scriptures, uh, seeking the Lord for answers, and writing in your journal or notebook so you could just see things, you know, just put before you as you take this personal inventory of your life. So today, uh, the name of the lesson is Dealing with Frustration. Have you ever been there? I'm sure you have. We all have been frustrated at one time or another in our lives, you know, uh, with family members, a spouse, a child, uh, a job. You know, frustration is a part of life. But how do you deal with your frustration? Do you take it to the Lord? Or do you blurt out, say things, and then later you wish you hadn't said it? You know, that's why we are to be what? Slow to speak, right? And quick to hear, listening to what the Lord would say so that we don't, uh, you know, act out of our emotions. Uh, this lesson, this this workbook, they have really been about dealing with our emotions, you know, uh, looking at ourselves internally and reflecting on things, things that we may have done, been through, experienced. But how do you deal with your frustrations on today? Let's see. Um, so in this chapter, we are going to tackle the deep rooted beliefs and how they can cause you to think differently about yourself. Okay, so for example, uh, the author is saying that I am lovable, I'm worthless, I'm not intelligent, I can't do anything right. These can be very painful. So our mind creates rules and expectations for us to live by to protect us from hurt, pain, and emotional stress. So have you ever been there? You've spoken uh, these negative words about yourself and then you in turn believe them and you have built up these belief systems that it can't change, okay? Uh, we must realize that God is the only one that can get rid of the darkness, all right? So God is the only one that can get rid of those negative, deep-rooted thoughts, the hatred, the darkness that you have about yourself. It's going to take God's word to uh, shed light on those negative beliefs. That is why we pray in the name of Jesus. Without him, we would be the enemy creating havoc in our lives. Hmm. Let's stop right there because the scripture comes to mind that death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it or thereof. All right. So what negative words have you been speaking over your life? You know, you've been helping the enemy. You've been creating an atmosphere for the enemy to live in, to reside in, to wreak havoc in your life. You have partnered with the enemy with your own words, all right? I'm unlovable. Nothing's going to change. I'm worthless. I'm not intelligent enough. I can't do anything right. And the enemy is sitting there like, he's loving it. He's loving it. Oh, no. We have got to change our words about ourselves. We've got to uproot those negative belief systems that we have about ourselves. And it's going to take God's word to shed light on those thoughts. You can walk in a room and say, let there be light. And it has to conform to your words because of the God you serve. You are the light, right? If you're saved and God is living in you, you have the Holy Spirit. You are the light. So we have to let our light so shine before men that they will see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. But what are you showing forth in your own life? Are you glorifying God when you're all alone? 
You know, no one's watching you, but God is watching you. He sees the good, the bad, the ugly, all right? He knows exactly what we're doing, what we're saying, what we're thinking about ourselves. No longer partner with the enemy, no matter what it looks like, what you feel like. You're not going to always be in that situation, always. But you have to start changing your thought processes, your thought patterns about yourself. You are not powerless. You are surrendering things to the enemy, things that do not belong to him. You're just giving your power away, giving it away to the enemy feeling hopeless about the situation. The enemy can't take anything from you, but you can give it away. So as of today, make it a point. I am no longer allowing the enemy access to my life. I am no longer allowing the enemy access to my thought pattern. I am no longer agreeing with the enemy. No longer. No matter what it looks like. We know that God is in control of all. We may not understand why God allowed things to happen in our lives, but as time goes by, God will reveal why certain things happen the way that they did in our life. When you read Genesis, you see God speaking things into existence. You don't see him trying to control the atmosphere with fear. You see a confident, self-assured God who knew what he was doing. He wasn't scared when he rolled up on darkness. We, we know in Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God said, in the beginning, God said, in the beginning, God said, what is Ivy saying? What is Sally saying? What is Sue saying? What are you saying? What are you speaking into existence? You speak it and it is so. I'm never going to get that job. It is so. I'm never going to feel good about myself. It is so. I'm never going to have any money. It is so. What are you speaking? Let's agree with God on today. Speak God's word. Now, we've already had the lesson about casting down those imaginations and anything, everything that exalts itself against the word of God. Genesis 1, 1 through 5, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. What are you creating? You don't like what you see in your life? It's time for you to recreate your life. Recreate what you want to see in your life. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed in your emotions? Do you want to be healed in your soul? If so, what do you want to be healed from? What is tormenting you? What is keeping you stuck? Put a name on it. You know what it is. Put a name on it, all right? Write it in your notebook or your journal. When you do that, you go to God's word, all right? Look up scriptures, God's promises, his word. Claim your healing. Claim that you will not be tormented from your past. Claim you will no longer be grieving continuously so you go into a state of depression, feeling as if there is no hope. Would your loved one really want you to be living that way? You can do something to honor their life. 
Yes, you can do something to honor their life. What is it that they enjoy doing? What organizations did, were they a part of? You can continue their legacy, living out your life with purpose. What do you need to be healed from? Do you know? Do you know? What are some of the deep-rooted beliefs that you need to come to out of agreement with? I'm never going to amount to anything. I don't know why I do the things I do. Write those things down in your journal or notebook. Where did those thoughts begin? How did they form in your mind? What parent, aunt, uncle, grandparent, brother or sister spoke those negative thoughts about you? What classmate spoke those negative thoughts about you? And you believe them as truth. I mean, I've shared many times how I didn't, you know, like my name growing up as a little girl, Ivy. You know, I was bullied. The children were terrible. You know, they called me Poison Ivy, Black Ivy, Ivory Soap. So every time someone spoke my name, I hated my name. You know, but I love my name today. I am Ivy. All right. When you think about the plant, it's a beautiful greenery that people use uh, for decorations. And then if you go and look up what your name means, my name means that I am a warrior. You know, all these years, I hated my name, so I hated myself. But I had to dig out those negative mindsets and find out who I am in God, why God created me. You know, what is my purpose? Most of all, is to glorify him to live a purposeful life, glorifying God and helping others get to that same place in their life. What are the things that if you don't complete them, it leaves you feeling meaningless and worthless? Is there something that you've been meaning to do and you have it and you're like frustrated, you feel disappointed to the point where you feel that life is meaningless or you are worthless? Mm. That comes from the enemy. There is no condemnation in Christ. All right, so you didn't complete it. What's stopping you? Get back at it. Get back at it. You don't have to stop, all right? What insecurities have you been dealing with? Psalm 139 is the psalm to read if you're having insecurities. There is only one of you in the world. You are an original. There is no one like you, baby. So stop comparing yourself to someone else because comparisons will kill your spirit. Yes, it will. You are one of a kind. You are special. You are unique. When God made you, like they used to say, they say he, they, he broke the mold. It's just you. You're unique. You weren't meant to be like anyone else. So don't compare yourself to anyone else. What borders and walls have you put up that need to fall? And those borders and walls are all in your mind. The mindset. Find scriptures to build up your inner man. Don't be ashamed. We all have put them up in some way because of past experiences, but they must fall just like the wall of Jericho. The walls must come down. Hebrews 11.30. Let's see what that says. Hebrews 11.30. Hebrews 11.30 says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. They were given the instructions to march around the wall and they did it by faith, believing God was going to move on their behalf. Same for you. Believe by faith 
that the walls are coming down in your life, in your mindset, in your soul. The walls are coming down. Claim that for yourself right now. The walls are coming down in my life, in each and every area of my life. The walls are coming down that don't line up with God's word. They're coming down. They're coming down. Declare that. Proclaim that. The walls are coming down. Throughout this book, throughout this journey, this series, we've talked about how powerful positive words and forgiveness are the keys to living a abundant life. We must combat our belief system and borders that we have created towards ourselves and others to guard ourselves. Continue to use prayer and the word of God as our standard. But don't forget to put on some praise and worship music and set the atmosphere. Invite God, invite the Holy Spirit to join you when you are going before the Lord. God has imparted authority to us to trample over the devil. We have to believe that nothing will be able to harm us. You must walk in the authority you have been given. Yes, you love your pastor, your bishop, your elders, your deacons. You love them, but they are not with you always. You see them on Sunday uh, your Bible study or your prayer meeting, they will not be with you always. What happens in the midnight hour, in that dark time, when the enemy attacks and those negative thoughts come, what are you going to do then? Start setting a time, it's you and God. Set the atmosphere with that music, get your word, get your notebook, because sometimes the Holy Spirit will drop something in your spirit. Write that down. You don't need to know why uh, the Holy Spirit is dropping it down, but you may know why. You may be looking for an answer about something, a word about something. God is speaking, but we have to be silent, quiet our spirits and listen for that small, still voice. Or sometimes it may be a loud voice, an audible voice. Listen, listen for God to speak to you when you spend that time with him. God wants to speak to us. Yes, he does. God himself is the power behind our authority. Therefore, we can move mountains. We have to just speak to the mountain. We don't have to move the mountain. Speak it, and it is so. Speak it in the atmosphere. Believe it, and it is so. Don't just stand there. Get to moving the mountain out of the way. How? By speaking to the mountain. Free yourself from negative thoughts and declare peace and tranquility over your life. Remove yourself from people, places, and situations that disturb your peace. Remove yourself from people, places, and things that will frustrate you. And declare, I'm going to live in peace, tranquility. I'm not going to let anyone disturb my peace. I'm not going to let a situation disturb my peace or a place disturb my peace. Mm -mm. We are to be people of peace, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons and daughters of God. Quiet down your emotions and thoughts so you can hear God. When you spend that time with him, pay attention and listen to what God is saying to you. And whatever God is saying to you, write it down. He may be saying, separate yourself from certain peoples, but you're having a hard time severing those ties. If they are not leading you to God, if they are not adding righteousness to your life, leading you the right way, sever those ties. They have been sent by the enemy. Those ungodly soul ties, those ungodly relationships, sever the ties. God has so much more in store for you. But sometimes we feel like, you know, this is it. I can't give this up. 
if it goes against God's word, sever those ties so God can do a work in your life. Aren't you ready for God to move in your life? He is so ready, willing, and able to do it, but he's waiting on you to do the right thing. You know what it is. You don't need me to tell you. You know what it is. Tranquility is necessary to relax and experience God on a whole new level. Do some house cleaning. Clean them out, clean them out, clean them out. Mm -mm. Peace and tranquility is where God is going to show up. He's not going to show up in sinful uh, situations. He's not going to show up in chaos. That is not where God is. What do you need to release? Who do you need to release to stay calm? Write that down. I need to release this person from my life. God wants me to be in peace and tranquility, not in chaos, not in turmoil, not with someone that does not value me, not with someone that does not encourage me. That's not what God has for you. No, when we are anxious, we make unhealthy decisions that cause us to be annoyed and frustrated in life. When we are anxious, we go ahead of God, right? I want it now. I got to do it now. I got to make a move now. No. God wants us to be in peace and tranquility, not frustrated. And then when we make those decisions, we said, man, I wish I wouldn't have did that. Now we're angry at ourselves and we're frustrated with the situation that we have created. Nothing seems to work out and it spirals out of control until your whole day is filled with negativity. And then you end up declaring into the atmosphere that this whole day has been a disaster. Have you ever been there? Are you there right now? Frustrated. You created a disaster. Now you say, my whole day going to be messed up. No, no, no. Okay, I made a mistake. Bad judgment on my part. What can I learn from this situation? There you go. I will not do this again. God, I need a plan to get out of this situation. This goes back to learning how to shape your words because they become your life. I know you've heard this before, you know, about the tongue, about your words. Your words become your life. How's your life today? Change your words. Change your words, change your atmosphere, change your mindset. Create the life you want with your words and wait for it to manifest. Freedom starts with your thoughts first, then actions. That mindset, you got to change the mindset. Take back your personal power by confessing God's word. Take it back. Speak new things over your life, all right? So if you know you've been speaking negative, I'm not gonna mount to anything. I'm not gonna do anything. I don't know why I do this. I'm not gonna mount to anything. Oh, the devil is a liar. Oh no, I am going to do this. What, what dreams do you have? What is that you want to do? Put that down, write the vision and make it plain. Look at it. How are you going to get there? How? Decision-making is critical when you're standing in complexity. You need weapons that will help you fight so you can be equipped for the battle ahead. The sword of the fearless warrior is the word of God. 
a genuine relationship with the father, spending that quality time with the father, a prayer life that has authority, wisdom and knowledge of times, wisdom of knowledge and of times. What is going on in the atmosphere? What is going on in the world in our times? When you realize that God has commanded blessings over your life, you won't become so frustrated with the burdens of life. God can do the supernatural more than we can ask or think according to the purpose that work, the power that worketh within us. Your outlet is so powerful. Plug into the source. Stop procrastinating. Stop being stubborn and start walking in the peace that God gave you and it belongs to you. Stop giving your peace away. Isaiah 12, two says, behold, God is my salvation. I am confident, unafraid, and I will trust in you. Yes, the Lord Yah is my might and my melody. He has become my salvation. When you are going through a tough time, do you tend to complain and focus on the negative? Or do you combat it with the word of God? When you're going through a tough time, do you just, you know, sit there and have that pity party and want somebody to come along and join the pity party? Combat it with the word of God. How do you tend to respond when someone asks you about the obstacle or the circumstances you are facing? Do you feed into the situation or do you speak the word of God? Speak the word of God over your situation. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. All right. All things work together for my good, according to God, those who love God, according to his purpose. Speak God's word over your situation. Speak the word of God over your frustrations, your situations. God loves you. God cares for you. And he has so much in store for you but there is some work that we have to do. We have to control our emotions. We have to control our words. You decree and declare God's word over your life, your family members, and your situations. Father, I lift up my sisters right now uh, before your throne of grace and mercy. Father, help them to seek you like never before. Help them to calm their emotions, oh God. Help them to speak your words over their situations, no matter what it looks like. We demolish the soul ties, cast down all strongholds. We crush and destroy every exalted and proud thing that comes against the knowledge of God in their lives. No longer will they agree with the enemy. As of today, Father, they will agree with you. It will not build a case against us. It will not prevail. We pray that every yoke is destroyed in the soul, the spirit, and the body in Jesus' name. I declare healing over their minds and their hearts, Father, their soul. We refuse to be stressed and frustrated. We repent for our negative thought process now. I ask that you transform our hearts and minds, Father, creating us, O oh God, a new heart, a heart after you, Father, a heart to please you, Father, and that we are, are able to stand guard against the enemy. We are able to stand guard against our mouths, Father. Father, we will look to see you in each and every situation, Father, that we go through, Father. And we thank you, God, for what you are doing in our lives right now, Father. We thank you for your word, Father, for it is our life, our health, and our strength. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. 
have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.